and welcome to Tech Tips with Soldo Media. I'm Amanda, and today I actually have another tripod to test out. This is the Small Rig CT10. And, um, you know, we like to test all different sorts of kinds of tripods, but why this one I found interesting. Small Rig is a really good brand name, and it was cheap. I think I got this for 79 euros on Amazon. So it's a very tempting tripod for you guys to want to buy. So why not test it and see what it's like? All right, let's check in the box. Let's see here. This is a four stage tripod. It has like a maximum height of uh, 180 centimeters or 71 uh, inches. And actually uh, on the English Amazons or like the uh, Canadian one, I actually saw that it's advertised in, not as the CT10, but as the yeah, the 3935 71-inch small rig tripod, but CT10 is what it says on the box here. So that's what I go after. But anyway, yeah, so you get a nice little, nice little bag. I'm not gonna lie, I took it out yesterday to look at it and I dropped it in the mud and I thought I got all the spots off of it, but I did not. So there you go, guys. <laughs> it's got a nice little bag with it. And when you open it up, oh yeah. So the, the max weight that you can hold on this is, it says 15 kilos. What is that, like eight pounds? You'll hear it in the specs, but like, like look, that looks really nice. Doesn't that look nice? Oh, and you can see here, look, that's a monopod too. Yeah, it's one of those monopod leg ones. Hmm. But it's an aluminum tripod. And it's got these little tab locks for extending out. Now it's out of your shot, but they're kind of loud. They feel a little bit stiff to me, but they might loosen up as you go. See what else we got in the box here. Oh, oh, there we go. The box, the bag. All right, what's this? Oh, yeah, so you got a iPhone holder. Okay, and it's got two uh, iPhone. Could be a smartphone, uh, you know, could be a Samsung, I'm sorry. Not prejudice here. Uh, it has two places by the looks of it that you can screw things on there and and there, that's handy if you wanna add something on there. And the phone must go on. Oh, it's not springy. Some of them are springy. This one's just a uh, screwy. <laughs> screwy rather than springy. <laughs> Tech life. You get some Allen keys here. Nice set of Allen wrenches, that's a good sign. And you get a plate. And you get some spike feet. Oh, and you get an extra plate. And I noticed, look, the plate actually has, one thing I really love about these kind of plates that have the, you don't have to always worry about having a coin with you or your, you know, multi-tool or what have you, because they have actually the, the little lever here for tightening, so that's pretty cool. Good quality, like it's, like you can feel it's small rig quality stuff. This is a little plasticky, but like it's still, it doesn't feel like it's gonna break in your hand or out on a shoot. Yeah. All right, so let's look at this guy. Oh, well, that's not straight. Yeah. Oh, so it's got a friction knob too on it for the ball head, look at that. So here's your main tightening knob. And then on the back here, you have a friction knob and then you have a pan, what do you call it, a pan lock there, nice. It feels like a good ball head actually. Oh, look, and you got, you got level there, level there, you got a level there, you got a level there. I like that. Some of the tripods I've tested recently, the level has been just like on the top of the plate right here. And it's super annoying because if you have a thicker camera body, it totally covers the, the leveler. 
All right, so this is a four-stage tripod, and it also has uh, an extending middle column, just like that. And this can also go down. But it doesn't seem to have the, oh, here we go. There we go. Oh, look, it's got a, it's got the thing for counterbalance hook underneath there. There you go, counterbalance hook right there. But yeah, so you can, you can lower this down. But one thing I, I see just like right out of the box that would be nice, it seems to be missing, and I'll look around on it a little more when we go do our field test, but the little piece that allows it to like take away the center column altogether so you can just flatten the tripod to the ground to get low, low level shots. It might be that it's one of those tripods you're gonna flip upside down to get low to the ground and invert your shot. Ooh, I like the pretty red details on it. <laughs> All my tech buddies out there, you guys are like, man, that doesn't matter that it's pretty. Come on, you know you like the red highlights, right? Yeah. Between you and me, you know you like it. But <laughs> I hope that doesn't become a meme. <laughs> I like that, that actually works really good. Okay, I think the only thing to do here is to take this out without boring you more with just playing with it here on the table. Uh, I think we need to take it out in the field, test it out, and uh, yeah, go to specs first. So specs. The maximum height is 180 centimeters or 71 inches. The weight of the tripod is 1.53 kilos or 3.37 pounds. The load capacity is between five kilos and 15 kilos, or 11 pounds to 33 pounds. It folds down to 43 centimeters, or 16.9 inches. All right, so here we are out in the field with the small rig CT10. And again, really fun little tripod, but I'm gonna start today actually talking about the uh, the travel bag that comes with it. It's always great to get a travel bag and it's nothing, it's not a bad travel bag. It's nothing to write home about. Uh, and my complaint about it is actually kind of a funny one, but a practical one. This tripod comes with so many accessories. So if I take out the tripod here, oh, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but that was exactly the point that I was gonna make. You know, I just have the plate and the, the telephone uh, adapter in it. I had to put the rest of the items, I had to put the rest of the items actually in my pocket because there's, there's nowhere to put them in the bag without having them fall out. Now it does come with quite a lot of accessories. Like we said in the studio, you get two, two plates, you get a set of Allen keys, you get some spiked feet, and you get a telephone adapter so you can put your iPhone or smartphone on the tripod and record with that too if you want to. And that's great. And I'm not complaining about any of those things, but it would be nice if they had just included a small pocket that you could tuck those in so everything didn't fall out. All right, well, let's test some of these accessories, shall we? Okay, so one thing you can trust with small rig is that it is really cool, easy to use gadgets. So right from the very get go, the plate has, instead of needing a screw, if you don't have, or sorry, screw, a screwdriver or a nickel or whatever you use, you don't necessarily need it because it actually has a little hand tightening hinge on it. So I'm just gonna mount that first to the camera, show how easy that is. There you go, get it nice and straight there. And yeah, no, no quarter required. Super simple. So, yeah. And then you get this nice ball head here uh, to mount it on. I'm just gonna tighten that around there. Yeah, so simple to put this on like any other plate. One thing I, I like here about this, and I'm gonna show it to you in a sec, is as far as the levels go, 
one on the back, one on the front, one on the side, all to tell me if I'm level or not. Uh, the other thing I really like actually is the size of the, the knob. There are a couple of plates out there, or rather tripod heads, ball heads, that uh, the knob ends up being just a little bit too thick. And on some of my cameras, I've tightened it on, I realize I can't get it off and I actually have to change the way the plate is so that this knob is in the back where I can get at it. And then you often can't see the, the levels anymore. So it's really, it's a good, it's a good little head. It's got like some friction on it. Oh, there's the friction knob. So it's got some friction on the ball head that you can adjust how much, how loose the ball head is. And of course your, your pan knob. I do have to tighten that a little bit though, the actual head onto the actual screw there. And that's something that is often an issue when it comes to uh, these kind of designs with tripods often this can come loose, this connection here. But yeah, it's really nice. Uh, you, you even have a little measure here to help you know how far you're gonna go if you're, if you're doing different time lapses and you're trying to set what you're, what you're up to. Really nice head. I have nothing to complain. Again, small rig makes really good stuff. Even the strap is small rig. We reviewed that the other week. Ah. So yeah, let's get on with it and actually talk about the actual legs. All right, so look, the max, the max height of this tripod is actually pretty far up there. It's 180 centimeters or 71 inches. So you got this stage here that you can come up and you can actually come up with this one too. And that's way taller than I am. So, I mean, if you're looking for height, this is a very excellent tripod. It is, it is stable in that it's not gonna fall over with your kit. But remember, when you have these travel tripods, they're only as strong as they are. And when you get the long neck section, if the wind is blowing and you're trying to take like a long exposure, that actually might be a little bit of an issue because you can see there is some wobble in it. But if you're gonna be, you know, not at full height or if you're standing on a relatively calm day like this, it's quite fine. But otherwise, I would recommend not being up at the maximum height. Huh. I'd like to report too that these little knobs, they're a little stiff. Could be that it's brand new, but they are a little stiff. Just got it out of the box yesterday, so yeah. I'd like to show you the, mon the monopod from this. So what you actually end up doing is taking this column, this center column out all the way. You unscrew this here, your counterbalance. <laughs> Again, this is a little stiff, but this guy comes out all the way. Come on, loose. There we go. He comes out all the way and then this leg here actually comes off. So you just turn that. And this guy attaches to this guy. Probably easier to do it when it's not fully extended, but it works. There. And just like that, I got a monopod. All right, on to the next bit. This is gonna be a pain. Come on. Which way is it that it goes in? Is it this way? Do I have to go all the way that way? Is it righty tighty lefty loosey? So guys, I got it fixed. I got it put back together. So let me just show you real quick uh, what, what the issue was. And this is a major downside for this tripod, I have to say. Uh, I wasn't very happy at all once I realized what had happened. So inside here, and we'll get a close up in a sec, but inside here, uh, there's this little plastic ring and this thing actually falls right out pretty much. And it had, it had slipped, you see it there? It had slipped all the way out of the, the holder here and down into the bottom. So it was stuck shut. We had to actually get some tools and pliers. And if you look at it, it's really, yeah, there it is. It's really weak and fidgety. 
Uh, and even when I was putting it back together again after we fixed it, I could see it still wanted to, to slip down. So not an awesome design and certainly something to be aware of if you get this tripod. Maybe it's not a good idea to use the monopod function with this uh, extender on it. Just use it and just put the head on it instead maybe, instead of taking this pole out because it really wasn't a great, uh, it, it's kind of cheaply made in that sense. Again, it's 70 euros uh, and it's a lot cheaper than a lot of other tripods this size and with this weight capacity. So take it with a grain of salt. I do think it's a nice tripod, but that is a very cheap element of this tripod. And for a small rig, I was kind of surprised. All right, let's go on and test the next bit. I want to talk about these again. They are really stiff and they are loud, but they hold good anyway. So again, it comes with the Allen keys for tightening, but I don't actually see where on here, like on the Manfrotto ones, you can actually tighten in here or in here, but this is just like a little cut off screw head of some sort. So it's tight, but if you snap that, it might be hard to replace it. But then again, maybe, maybe other tripod manufacturers don't bank on their uh, locks snapping all the time like Manfrotto does. <laughs> Sorry, Manfrotto. Uh, but yeah, all right, I'm gonna set this up, guys, real quick, and put the uh, phone attachment on it while we're here. And it needs to go onto a plate before you put your phone on it or before it mounts on the tripod. So just for starters, and then just attach it to the tripod the same I would with the regular camera, just like that. I'm gonna look for which pocket I put my telephone in. There it is. Just so simple. Maybe I wanna be facing the other way if I'm the one recording so that I can see what I'm recording. But in, in essence, Let's see here. Come on, phone. Oh, there it is. The screen is so bright. All right, so cheers. I think I got me. Did I get me? I can't see here. Cheers. <laughs> Let's see if I got. Oh, yes, I got myself. It works, but it's just that simple. The only other thing I like about this is that you can turn it so you can do, you know, Instagram mode, if you will, if you need to, or you can turn it back the other way, however you want to. So that's super neat. All right, let's move on to the next thing. So you can see, actually, I can do all sorts of things. I can flip the tripod upside down to get these nice little mushrooms and, uh, kind of fun. Sweden is actually having a major issue right now. You notice the video I did with the tripod broke the first half of the field test. That was just like two days ago and we were up to our knees in snow. Now it's gone and stuff is starting to grow. Oh, all right, let's go to the next one. What can I say about this? You get a lot of stuff with this tripod. You get these spikes, and I'll show you real quick how to put them on. But I mean, it's a sturdy aluminum tripod. It, it is fairly light. It's not super heavy. It's got a really great ball head on it. It's got this neat little strap thing here that you can get rid of if it annoys you. Um, but overall, it is still a 70 euro tripod and, and uh, there are some shortcomings to it. Like I said, like if you have it fully extended and you're wiggling it, it's going to wiggle a lot. If it's a windy day and you have it all the way up to it's 180 centimeters or 71 inches, you're going to actually uh, see the wobble if, if you've got a breeze. Uh, and again, too, with the column design in the center, not the best design in one way. Um, I am interested to see if you can get an attachment so you can get rid of the center column 
it is a tall tar tripod on its own without the center column. So if you could just attach this straight, the head straight in without the center column, you might have a little bit more stability for the price. But overall, it's still a decent tripod. Um, it reminds me a little bit of the Manfrotto Elements tripod. And it's the same thing, like that had a little bit too much plastic on it for my liking. But uh, it still was for under a hundred bucks, a really decent tripod. All right, so you see the rubber feet, they just unscrew and you just screw the spikes in nice and easy. And then again, this is one of Jake's pet peeves. More and more tripod companies seem to be doing that. I don't know if they watched our videos. I wish they, they would send us stuff if they do. <laughs> but when you have to buy the spikes separately, like with some companies, it's such a pain. Like you're already spending upwards of 300, 500 bucks for some tripods. Uh, and then you have to buy the spikes on top of that. That's crazy. So when you get a nice cheap tripod like this and you can, it comes with spikes, it comes with two plates. So you could always have one mounted to your phone attachment and one for your camera, or you could have two different cameras with the same plate on it if you use two different cameras at times. Uh, you get a lot with this tripod. So on the one hand, I have to say it, it is a really good deal, but I, I say buyers beware know that there are some things like these latches have a not so easy replacement parts to them. Uh, you know, like the Manfrotto's, you can screw them tighter if they get loose or whatever. That and the center column and the wobbliness, uh, buyers beware. It's a good tripod, I think for 90% of uh, hobby photographers, but it might not be the one that you wanna take uh, to shoot a wedding. It might not be the one that you want to take with you to, uh, to shoot your kid's graduation. <laughs> but, but if you're just going to go to Hawaii and shoot your vacation, have at it. It's a good little tripod. So I hope that helps you out. And if there's any other ones that you guys wanted to test, uh, just leave them in the comments. We'd love to actually bring some more gear in and test it. Or if you want to see some different types of tests, absolutely, we're, we're game for it. I have a couple of backpacks that you guys have suggested that I'm going to order in here in the spring and test out and uh, see if they make it in the backpack adventure 2023. Thank you guys for watching. We always appreciate you. And we'll see you in the next one.